everybody, welcome back to another THI podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. Breaking news edition. Seth Trimble has announced on his Instagram page that he is withdrawing from the transfer portal and returning to North Carolina. This does not come as a shock. If you will ha- would have been on our message boards, you would have known. I know there's a lot of stuff that's been out there and it took a while to happen, but we certainly treaded the way you need to tread with news like this. You have to handle news properly. Not everybody does. We did. We had a story ready to roll out. Now I am banging out the podcast to discuss very quickly the importance, the meaning of Seth Trimble coming back to North Carolina. First of all, if Carolina were to have gone out in the portal and picked up a Seth Trimble from somewhere else, knowing him as the way we do, everyone would say, wow, what a really nice pickup. Because the truth is, he's better than some of the guys that North Carolina has been talking to. And quite frankly, in some respects, for what they need, he's almost better than all those guys and would be more useful than all those guys. Now, he's not a post player, so I'm not going to go there. However, I did a drop earlier this week where I was talking about the energy. In fact, Jacob and I were talking about Harrison Ingram when uh, when he announced that he was going to leave about the energy that they need to replace. Well, they need to replace that energy with guys from the portal, but they also get it with Seth Trimble. He's an energy guy. He's a vitality guy. He's a juice injection guy. He's a guy that plays the game in a way that elevates the intensity of teammates, but he's also a guy that just has such an extra layer of athletic ability that he's got naturally built-in juice, if you will. Just the manner he goes about things, the the quickness with which he makes a steal and gets into transition, and that and some of the things that he's developed <clears throat> to his game. So before I get into that, let's throw a couple of stats out there. He averaged th- uh, 5.2 points a game this year, 2.1 rebounds, He was in the 20 minute range and a guy who quite frankly, in the latter part of the season had had some 20 minute games, 20 plus minute games that were very important for the Tar Heels. I think he got better as the season went on. He had that little period where he had the concussion. Getting lots of phone calls here, guys. Phone's blowing up. It's that time of year. He had a concussion and the Tar Heels two worst defensive games were Clemson, game that he missed. Syracuse, a game he came back for, but he wasn't ready. He told me a couple months ago that he really came back too soon and the Tar Heels weren't ready to go. It it really highlighted his importance as a defensive player. So everybody knows that. So let's look at the last 10 games. 18 for 29 from the field. 18 for 29 from the field. 4 for 10 on threes. 13 for 17 from the free throw line. Very efficient. Another stat for the year, he turned the ball over every 16.1 minutes as a freshman. He turned it over every 27.2 minutes as a sophomore. He went from one for six on three-pointers to 13 for 31, which is 41.9%. I'm going to throw one other thing at you. The improvement in his game. This is what I really want to discuss here because I talked to him about this a couple of times. And had actually a pretty good conversation with him about that little dribble jumper, that dribble from the wing into the lane, inside the free throw lane, either with the right hand or dribbling with the left hand, a couple of dribbles, two or three, get in the lane, pull up jumper. He gets, he elevates so high, it's unstoppable. You're going to see more of that next year. That's something he developed during the course of this year. He also started developing a floater. Seth had trouble finishing at the rim at times during a long stretch of the season. And there were times I think he would leave his feet and wasn't exactly sure what he was going to do. Well, he started to develop a floater. You're going to see the floater and runner game as part of what he does more next year than you've seen before. And because of that, it's going to help him finish at the rim more because a lot of his stuff with the rim was highly contested because everyone knew he was going right to the rack. So they went to the rack. Now he's going to add, he has that pull-up jump. He's got that dribble of the lane jumper. He's going to have a pull, more of a pull-up jumper. He's going to have that floater. 
and it's going to wreak havoc on defenders mentally, and he's going to get to the rim more, and you're going to see him flush in traffic in half-court situations more than he ever has. He's only done it a couple of times. He usually flushes either on a backside thing deal or in transition. You're going to see more flushing from this guy, but you're going to see more finesse too. The finessing, the finesse stuff will open the door for more flushing. I also look at this as a massive win for Hubert Davis because the message it sends is here's a guy who isn't promised a starting job. All these dudes out in the portal want all these promises. If you're on our boards, you would know what some of the promises are, but they all want promises. Seth wasn't given the promise that he wanted. That's one of the reasons he went in the portal and started looking around. However, he's a guy who loves Chapel Hill so much. He loves the culture of this program so much that he's back. He wants to be a Tar Heel for life. There's something old school, even though he went out and tested the waters, there's something old school about what Seth Trimble has done here. I think it's going to endear him tremendously to the fans. It's the NIL era, guys. I think his NIL is going to go up. And he's going to be relaxed and comfortable knowing that this is where he is and this is where he's going to be. So it's a win for Hubert because he gets a lockdown defender. It's a win for Hubert because he gets a guy who shows the world that he loves the program and loves the culture and is willing to accept whatever his role is in that culture. And it's a win for Hubert because he gets a guy who has leadership potential. And I think Seth can be a leader. Seth is vocal, he's articulate, he's smart, he plays well enough to be that guy. And even if he doesn't start, he's one guy I think that can come off the bench and still be a leader. And he may end up starting, who knows? But he's got the whole package. He is the quintessential program guy who has a chance to be really damn good at some point. And he's already shown flashes of that. So this is a massive win for North Carolina. This is a massive win for Hubert Davis. This is a massive win for the Carolina fan base. And quite frankly, it's a win for Seth Trimble. I think 25 years from now, he's going to look back and say, man, I made the right decision. He could have gone to another place and played 30 minutes a game, maybe or maybe not get in the NCAA tournament. But the link that he's going to have to Carolina forever is going to be good for him forever in life. Let me know what you guys think. How excited are you that Seth Trimble is coming back? What do you think his role will be next year? How enhanced will it be from this past season? And if you're excited about it, go ahead and click like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you get updates every time we upload. And remember, guys, for inside information, there is a crap load of it on our site right now. you got to be a subscriber. It's just $8.33 a month for a one-year subscription. Same price for 10 years since I took over this site. Same price. So head on over there now and sign up real fast. You do it when you watch this video today. You're going to have inside information about stuff going on in the Carolina basketball portal right this minute. So head on over there and become a member of our community and be a Tar Heel insider too. I'm AJ. Appreciate you guys stopping by.